I'm here with Ruben Tilgna from Alicia. And the reason I wanted to come here is because I love this, these instruments. I, I look at them as instruments. <laughs> and I look at them as like modules that I can use to manipulate sound. Not necessarily in the traditional way, like put it on the final mix. And we could talk about that, but I'm also most interested on how you come up with these ideas and turn it into something that we can use as instruments for musicians. And also you clearly think very musically, like in the, in the flow of, of music, how we create music and how we are going to listen to music, right? So that the, and it's an enhanced experience. So I'd love to hear about like your little bit background, what led you to want to do this. It's not easy. Okay, so uh, thanks. Al for you to come over, yeah, first of all. Oh. But also, I'm a musician. I um, learned piano when I was 10, up to 14. Then later, I played bass, so I was into some kind of musician. I played in bands, so this is my background uh, as a musician. I'm not a professional, but an amateur musician, but I know how that worked out. And then later on, I started my career at SPL, the other drum manufacturer, and I have uh, designed a lot of stuff for them. I think one of the famous tools was the transit designer. This is uh, the transit shaping tool, and so I found the, yeah, the concept of, of creating this effect. And, and therefore, I was always mixing between techniques and musician. But originally, I've learned to repair TV sets and, and um, radios, something like this, in the beginning of the 90s. In that area, everything was analog. Analog TV sets, VCR recorders, yeah. amplifiers. So that was my foundation for everything here. You like analog. Yeah. Or well, you know it too. Uh, yeah, I know it. I have learned it from the foundation, from yeah. the basics. Yeah. So by making that transient uh, box for SPL, then you decided to make your own. Yeah, I mean, the, I was 10 years at SPL, have done a lot of stuff, preamps, um, summing mixes, everything. And then I found it Illusia in 2006. And we started with the Alpha compressor. And this was more. Um, thinking about in the best uh, signal processing that I can achieve. And the foundation was the um, discrete amplifiers. And, and surrounded by this, I create this alpha compressor. And that's where the good sound comes from? Yeah. I mean, it's a combination of amplifier, of components, of power supply, of everything. It's, I compare like cooking. If you gave someone the list for, for ingredients for cooking, and 10 people would do completely different. And that's the same here. If you give someone a schematic of a, of a box, it yeah. will sound different. Uh -huh. And this is the secret to choose the right components, uh, to mix in the right way. But I go deeper and create my own amplifiers, my own VCAs and everything like this. Well, because it's to taste, if you use the cooking analogy, right? Yeah. yeah. And then, you know, we like your taste. Thanks. So this is your newest uh, creation? Yeah, this is a prototype that's not in the market. So we show that here. Um, yeah, Can you give us a quick... Yeah, quick run through on. Okay, this is um, an analog recallable channel strip, and it's really made for yeah use as a producer to have a fast workflow. It started with a preamp here, then we have here a four band equalizer with dynamic section in each band. It's really important. Follow up by a compressor, which can be blended between a more um, leveling style and faster style here. Then we have a flavor section where you can add warms, harmonics, some passive EQing, because normally tonally it's more the transfer and cleaner side, but with the flavor you can bring this to a more tasteful and um, more vintage style. Um, then we have added here a complete monitor solution to provide those headphone outputs here to provide the artist with a dedicated monitor, makes complete latency free Very nice. with an internal reverb. And we have up to 23 presets here, and this will come with a little plug-in at your DAW to, to save the settings there. So we can so it's digitally controlled analog. Yeah. Okay. So now, how many synthesizers have you run through this? Not one, because it's under development. So it's not really. No, we could not run audio through. But you designed it to be a vocal chain, yeah, it's right? Yeah, vocal chain. So for me, I don't sing. So the first thing I want to do is jam a synthesizer through. So. This is my thinking, you know, I like to use these things as modules because that's what I do. And I find that your boxes just take me to another place. They just like, it's like putting my sound on stage. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? With the lights and the crowd behind it. And so that's what I'm interested in doing. So you have two different compressors. Is that right? Yeah, right. So one of the alpha compressor, that's our mastering tool. Which one is that? Over there. Let's go. Okay. We can walk. <laughs> 
So this is where we started wow. our career. Yeah, this is a mastering great uh, compressor. It's a softy device. It's a toolbox. It's way more than only um, a compressor. We have MS inside. We have an audio filter, sidechain filter, parallel compression, and a soft clipper. And this is really, uh, for massing guys, the thing to bring up the sound and make it more open and but clear. Could you use it for recording too? Yeah, but this is a very expensive re device for only recording, but you can use it also, yeah. <laughs> and have you run synthesizers through it? Yes. And how do you like that? Yeah, great. Great, right? <laughs> but I think I have something more for you as a synthesizer guy. I think that's... Okay, what? Let's over to these stuff here, because not everybody can... I like this moving around. This is good. Yeah. Not everybody can afford this amount of money for this, but I think this is way cooler. So this is basically 500 modules in our own chassis here, but here, this is a stereo compressor, the Expressum. And when I test this and check this out, I use synthesizers to check out how this behaves in synthesizer sounds and to, to do a very extreme compression, let's say uh, 15 dBs and what came up if you have to say a synthesizer with reverb, what it's doing here. And so this is really a super fun to do. Wow, it's, but is this like a rack of Oh, there's there's an expressor, expressor. Yeah, so it's two expressors. Something different a, here. Yeah, this is a preamp, and this could be also useful for um, for synthesizer guys. Saturation. Yeah, saturation a little bit with the shaping here. There's also an onboard compression, uh, low cut, but also if you um, synthesize the output is a little too low, that you can adjust this here because the minimum gain is only two dB, and then even um, you have a synthesizer with not enough uh, power. Uh, okay. Upper level can engage this. And then stereo EQs, X filter sounds amazing on, on everything, also on synthesizers. So it's like at the level of a filter, right? Yeah, that level yeah, of yeah. EQ. So it's a it's, yeah, it's a four band EQ, low shelf, high shelf, high mid, low mid, and um, yeah, this is stereo with one control. It's super cool on stereo sources. And then character. This is for your synthesizer guys. It's a distortion unit, so it can go from subtle saturation up to totally oh, crazy stuff. One of my favorite words I say a lot, drive. Yeah. All the all the Moog, you know, Bob Moog stuff had drive, like all the Moogrefoger pedals, literally a drive yeah. knob, and it's just something special that you just add a little bit. Yeah. And so you have it on here. So, and then color. Yeah, this is uh, something that I will change the way how the bass frequencies will distort. Normally the bass is uh, highest level, distort at first so we can remove the bass, and then distort and then bring back the bass. So you can change how oh. much bass will influence into this distortion. That's yeah. great. Yeah. And then, okay, and then your last That's one. That's the envelope. Oh, because yeah. I have you know this, this module. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, just briefly explain this. Yeah, this is a transient shaping tool basically and you have an attack to enhance the start of the transients, but there's a frequency control that you can tell, okay, above this frequency, the attack will be enhanced. And then we have the sustain control. It oh. tells um, to what frequency the sustain will be bring up. And this is super cool to adjust and to play around with. Uh, people normally use it for um, smashing room mics for drums, yeah. but even for synthesizer to shape the same part. Oh, of I love a, it on synthesizer. Cool. I mean, so this is an interesting way to go. It's almost like Eurorack, you know, at a high level where you have your synthesizer and then you run it through a chain yeah. like this and use these as processors that are going to do things that aren't necessarily changing the innate sound, but enhancing what you're giving it. And it does take it to another level. I mean, okay, so. Having these in a smaller box, like what's the trade-off as opposed to getting like the full rack expressor? Is it going to sound different? No, the same electronics inside, same PCBs, but really an other form factor. And I mean, this it's is only form factor. Yeah. So if you have, let's say, a typical 500 rack, you put it in, you have a lot of stuff into this rack. And some people want to have the 19-inch version because then the layout is a little more handy. So it depends on you. But your, it tests out the same. Yeah. Wow, so this is quite an option to have a rack of like this with a, with a yeah, modular synthesizer. Yeah, absolutely. And then have a little patch bay maybe where you could choose to go, um, Yeah. right? Where you can choose which way you want to go and just leave a couple out. But if, are they true by, like the, the uh, yeah, so equivalent of true bypass? Yeah, so if it offs now, it's really a relay going on on the back side, feeding the signal from front to back and now it's engaged and then you have your signal going on. So only if I wanted to do it in reverse order or something like that, otherwise I could have them all in a line and then bypass them. What I do is, um, let's see if I can show this up. 
up these cubes here and have created a chain only with the XLR. And then I could go in if you want to have another chain and use the input for the jacks because the jacks is overriding this input. So I've at home my, my fixed chain. If I want to change, I use Whoa, the jacks for this. So you can patch it? In the so back? yeah, I mean, it's if you have excess on the back side. But I know the Moger Fogers all patch on the back. Yeah, and so, so I'm I can quite use it. Yeah. So it's a way how I can make a different chain, but I use the XLR for a fixed connection and use the, now this for another connection or as an additional oh, output. So you can resequence. Yeah. Yeah. May I hold it just to see the weight? Sorry? May I hold it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's not very heavy. Look, one hand. <laughs> it's like a pedal. I never thought of using like this level of gear as a pedal. It's portable, even if you don't have a 19 inch rack or whatever, you can place it everywhere on your desk. Or even people having all this um, electronic stuff on a table, you can place it in between. Yeah. And it's amazing that it's the same quality of sound as the bigger. But yeah. what about the mastering compressor? Where's the little guy? Yeah, this is the expressor. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Wow. Well, this is great. That's something I'm just going to have to try. And, yeah, and absolutely. running through this and using these as in a different kind of way than maybe, you know, an audio engineer would um, at the point of the source of the sound. So take our instruments and then, you know, you can even change the instrument because we're doing synthesizers. So once you hear what it's doing here, you can kind of go back to the original sound, adjust it a little, come back through, take your sound to the whole next level. Fantastic. That's great. Yeah. Alicia. <laughs>